Hello and welcome to the Carl Bleming channel. Uh, today I just wanted to do sort of a first impressions video about my new computer, the Bonobo laptop from System76. And the main reason I'm doing this is just to... Uh, well, when I was searching for information online about the laptops I was researching uh, when I was making my purchase decision, I didn't really see a lot of information about this uh, this particular computer online. Uh, I know there's there's a description on the manufacturer's website, um, and there was a, a very in-depth review actually on the um, done by the guys that do the Linux Action Show. Now the specs will be uh, below the video in the description, and the things that that I upgraded you know I I didn't go with the with the base model I did do a series of upgrades so I'll put a little asterisk next to the things that I upgraded now the first thing I'll mention is the power brick which is huge I mean it's it's probably uh, it's probably bigger than an actual masonry brick If you measure it, it's um, it's about eight inches by four inches by uh, a little less than two inches. Okay, I'll start with the the outside. The top has sort of like a sort of a rubberized plastic feel to it, and it has the System Seventy Six logo. Now the front edge doesn't really have anything except for some status lights here. On this side you have the um, a lock port, Ethernet, this is a SD card reader, and a variety of audio in and out ports. On the back, um, as you can see, we've got two giant uh, exhaust ports for the cooling system. Um, this is the power jack. This is a USB 3.0 HDMI port. And this, I think it's something called a display port. On the right hand side, here's the optical drive an eSATA port, um, two more USB 3 ports, and this is a powered USB 3 port. Okay, and this is the inside. I think uh, the speakers are along this grill here. This is the uh, power button. Um, full keyboard with a numeric uh, pad. This is the touchpad, which is large, and it has one of those integrated buttons where you can you can just push it anywhere and it'll click. Oh, and there's a fingerprint reader here, but I don't expect I'm going to be using that. And this is the first computer I've had that um, lights up the keyboard. You, know, you can uh, have it light up in a few different colors here. Which uh, I don't know. I guess that's handy if you're if you're gaming in the dark and you want to you know see where your WASD keys are. But um, I've never really seen the need for a, a light up keyboard before. I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe my opinion on that will change as I use it. it has a 17.3 inch uh, 1080p uh, display, which is LED backlit. Uh, resolution is uh, 1920 this way, 1080 this way. And there's a 2 megapixel webcam and microphone up here. Now, I'm actually not liking the keyboard as much as I thought I would. It's, uh, it's okay. I mean, uh, my last computer did not have a numeric pad on the side, so I'm kind of used to, like, holding my hands like this and typing, but in here you have to hold it over here, which isn't a big deal. But um, one thing about this is that all the keys are flat, and there's really not any space between them. 
So like uh, on my other computer, uh, or on most keyboards, you can just, without looking at the keys, you can just kind of rest your hand here. And because of the space between the keys, you can kind of tell where the, where the enter key is without actually looking at the keyboard. And in this, I kind of have to, I, I do have to look. And also the, the uh, arrow keys, and the shift key is kind of small here, instead of the arrow keys being down and over. So that's, that's going to take some getting used to. And the delete key is kind of in a place where it's, I, you don't expect it to be, for me anyway. And of course, because I'm, you know, me, I had to take a look inside. Um, it's got this awesome cooling system. Three fans. And this is the CPU, and it's got this giant heat sink which goes into this fan. So I guess this fan is dedicated to cooling the, the CPU, which is an i7. Um, this is a speaker. It has this uh, speaker hole. It does have stereo speakers on the top, but it has this also, so I guess it has sort of like a, a subwoofer on the bottom. Uh, this is where the battery goes. Um, it's got two hard drives in it. This one is a 750 gigabyte you know, standard uh, magnetic hard drive with the spinning platters, etc. And underneath that is a, which I'm not going to take this out right now, but right underneath it, I believe, is an Intel solid state drive, which is 120 gigabytes. And I have it set up so the solid state drive is the boot drive and this is the data drive. And it also has a dedicated. Um, NVIDIA graphics card and I'm pretty sure one of these fans is, is dedicated just to cooling down the graphics card I'm uh, I'm not sure which one I, I think this one um, and maybe this one is more of a like general purpose cooling the whole thing down type of fan and it's got these giant exhaust ports in the back uh, this is the Intel Centrino Advanced N Wi-Fi card. Um, although one thing that's mystifying me a little bit is the RAM, because I I know that it has four slots uh, for RAM, and I ordered it with two eight gigabyte um, cards, so I wanted to have plenty of RAM, so I didn't have to ever worry about uh, not having enough. So I got the sixteen gigabytes. And I got it in the two 8 gig cards so that I would have room to grow. Uh, but I don't see them. I see these, these two slots here. And they have these clips on the side for holding a card in. So I'm thinking these are my two empty ones. But I don't see where the, um, the two that are actually installed are. Unless they're on the opposite side of the circuit board. Or maybe under here. I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't figure out how to get this piece off. So if anybody out there has one of these and you happen to know where the RAM is, uh, I would be curious to know. There was one thing that I was a little disappointed with. Um, the website said that the computer came with a Targus 17-inch clamshell carrying case. When I heard clamshell, I kind of imagined sort of like a suitcase, you know, something that opened like a clamshell like this, you know, with a hinge in the middle, sort of like a hard shell case, maybe uh, maybe like an aluminum suitcase with uh, foam padding inside or something like that. But this is what uh, actually came with it, sort of like a vinyl bag. There's, a, I guess, a space here, which is... It's not really padded. It's a place where you can put the computer and then a place to put papers, I suppose. And it doesn't actually say Targus on it. I, it's not branded, so I, I imagine it's possible that this was made by Targus. I have another bag, a Targus bag, which is really, which is really nice. But this is, I don't know, it's kind of not what I expected.
And if you look here, actually just barely fits in. It really isn't big enough for this computer. I suppose I could zip this up and carry it, but uh, if I were to take this like on an airplane trip or something, I don't think I'd be using this bag. One thing though is that I actually do have this really fancy Swiss gear laptop bag that somebody gave me for Christmas, which is made for 17 inch computers. This one has a really nice, you know, padded area in here. So I figured I'd just use this one. But then I found out this freaking laptop is too big for a for a, a, a laptop bag designed for. 17 inch computers. It really doesn't fit in here. I don't know, am I, am I putting it in the wrong... I'm not putting it in the wrong place, am I? Let me try the other slot. Yeah, that one's even tighter. Yeah, it just it won't fit. So if anybody out there knows bag that actually fits this freaking thing, please let me know. Now about the portability, um, I mean this, this is meant to be a desktop replacement laptop. So portability isn't really uh, its major strong point. This is kind of what, you know, back in the 80s we used to call a luggable computer, meaning that uh, if you needed to move it, you could in the same way that you would move a heavy suitcase, you know, with a, with a handle on top. You could carry it as one unit from one place to another and open it up and, and, and use it. It's not really portable in the, in the sense that you could put it in a backpack or a briefcase and just take it with you everywhere. Now, overall, I'm very happy with it. Um, you know, I, I, I agree I kind of overbought the, on this one. It's It has more power than I actually need right now, but... The way I see it is uh, sort of like future-proofing, you know, because I don't really want to buy a new main computer for at least three to five years. So I wanted to get something really powerful now so that um, I wouldn't have to, you know, do incremental updates um, over the next, you know, five years or so. So that's all I wanted to say in this video. I mean, you know, I guess later on maybe I can, uh, if you have questions about like uh, performance of software on this computer. Maybe I could try things out and let you know how it works. Now in the in the Linux Action Show review, they said that, uh, you know, it's a very powerful computer and you never wait for anything. Everything happens instantaneously. And uh, I'm finding that's, that's, that's kind of an exaggeration. I mean, it's very fast, uh, especially compared to my other computer, which was uh, three or, you know, three, almost four years old. Well, you know, no computer, no matter how fast it is, is going to feel instantaneous. You know, eventually, you know, <laughs> you'll run up against some some computer task which is uh, going to take longer than you want. But, you know, that's just how it goes. So I guess that's it. Um, if you're, like, considering buying uh, one of these computers and you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments. Okay, um, that's it. Thanks for watching.